day. So it's 70 degrees out here in New York City. And uh, the courthouse where Donald Trump's hush money case is going on uh, is half a mile from my house. Also right near where people are getting married. So you'll see some people with flowers. Um, I figured I'd head down there and see what people have to say. And then just a little past there is Wall Street where it's like flood Wall Street for Gaza. That's going on. So I thought I would go check that out and um, see what people have to say. And it seems like it's interesting. I'll bring it to you. Tristan Snell. Okay, so Tristan, why are you here today? Uh, I was here invited to speak to talk about the importance of pursuing equal justice under law, even when it comes to somebody like Donald Trump. We can't have folks that get so much special treatment that they're completely above justice and accountability. So you uh, obviously there'd be people that would say just the opposite, that would say, well, he's getting this special eyeball on him because people are angry at him for a variety of reasons and this is the one that has sort of stuck. You've heard that argument, I'm of sure. Of course. The kicker is that Donald Trump would have been long ago found liable for fraud, convicted of various criminal offenses, probably decades ago had it not been for all of the special treatment that he's gotten by virtue of being a celebrity and a powerful figure. How long do you think we're going to be here in trial? I think we're going to be here for probably like 8 to 10 weeks. Uh, I do think this is going to get gobbed up by a lot of motions and a lot of back and forth about pretty much everything. But they're going to make sure, I believe, that everything's being done the right way. Uh, I think we let, have to let the process uh, take its course. But our job as people, and especially as anybody who has any role in commenting or being part of the media, uh, is to report on this, keep it in the public spotlight, and make sure that we keep on reporting the facts as they are. This is not just a hush money case. This was a campaign campaign cover-up to steal the 2016 election. That's what happened here, and we need to start reporting about this case the right way. This wasn't trivial. This wasn't a personal matter. This was something that he hid from the American people in order to steal the 2016 election. And if you had a prediction, of course, that's what we're all waiting on, Tetra right. Books. What, what do you think? I do think this is going to result in a conviction on one or more criminal counts for him. I think that the real action will probably then take place on appeal where the determination will be made about whether or not the falsifying of business records had another cr was in service of covering up another crime, and that will determine whether or not Trump is guilty of a misdemeanor or a felony. If it's a misdemeanor, he'll get fined. If it's a felony, he's likely looking at prison time. Thanks very much. Okay. Hey, how you doing? Good. Tell me why you're here and where you came from. We're here from Long Island, and we're here to support President Trump. How come? But How come? Because he's the greatest president to ever lived, and we gotta get that idiot that's in office right now out. I'll let you drive slowly. You feel like he's being railroaded? Railroaded? Railroaded's an understatement. Okay, what's your name? Tell me your name. Vincent Franco. Okay, Vincent, thanks so much. Yeah, I know. I know, I know. I know. Tell me why you're here and who you are. So, my name is Varney Halasa. I have a theatrical protest group called Revolution is Sexy. Uh, we started in the days of Occupy Wall Street. Uh, but everybody's work, my, my group there, everybody's working, so it's just me today. Uh, but I'm basically here because if I have to endure another four years of Donald Trump, uh, racism, bigotry, hate speech, tax breaks for the wealthy, money for endless war, uh, I'm going to lose it. So that's why I'm here, <laughs> yeah. So you're here bringing some beauty to this protest. Yes, and I think I represent like a lot of New Yorkers, um, you know, uh, you know, people are really, I think, hurting, you know, uh, and I just feel like both parties, I mean, this is, I mean, right here I'm protesting against Donald Trump, but I've also protested against Biden, yeah. um, and I think just like the two-party duopoly, I think we need another choice, um, and, you know, I don't know if the hush money is going to raise to a felony, I think people would like to, but the real felony of both parties is that, like, you know, the majority of Americans can't support don't have $400 for an emergency, and people are really hurting. So I think the real message is that. Uh, I bring you guys in with like all this like sexy stuff, uh, sparkly, uh, but I think there's a more serious, complicated picture of what is really going on in America. And uh, what I'm sort of hopeful is that the young generation, uh, they don't want endless war. Uh, they want a larger social, social safety net, universal health care, money for college so we can elevate everybody in society. Uh, so that's where I'm hoping it goes. Um, but I think both candidates have to, have to earn the votes right. of the American public. So, thank you. Thank you. I'm Jenny Fisher, and uh, I like to think of myself as a defender of democracy. And are you an attorney? I am not. Uh, what I brings retired. you? Retired. 
what brings you down here? I think it's important to stand up to corruption, criminality in our elected officials, and that's what this uh, trial that starts with the jury selection today is about. Uh, Trump has committed election interference by several days before the election, hiding information that would have been relevant to voters. Were you sort of a Trump opponent before all of this happened, or did this sort of sharpen your appetite? Well, I remember the 80s when he was a... <laughs> You know, we all New Yorkers knew he was a bit of a crook, and a, you know, the Donald was was not a person you could trust, not a person you could uh, believe anything he says. So I feel a little guilty that we didn't raise more ruckus back in the day, and now he's jeopardizing a lot of the world. Do you feel, or have you considered what other people consider that exactly what you're sort of saying? Like, well, he's kind of done a lot of un pleasant things for a long time and now it now the chickens are coming home do you think there's something to that here I certainly hope that is the case he certainly has deserved it many times over uh, we saw with the Eugene Carroll that caught up with him I have friends who are not among the 26 women who have accused him that were shoved up against a wall by him when they were working you know catering for him or whatever he's been doing that kind of disgusting uh, assault for many, many years, and I just am so impressed with the way Jean Carroll stood up, because it's not easy. You get many death threats, you get harassed, you get uh, belittled. Oh, okay. And, uh, and okay. uh, yes, I hope that catch and that caught up with him, the fraud, which he's committed so much of over the years. He knew who to ask back in the day, who to pay, you know, when New York was a bit more <laughs> yep. a mob run, uh, and, um, and hopefully, you know, this, this will all catch up. Thank you so much. Sure. <laughs> Did you make that? Uh, I have a made uh, for us uh, in El Salvador with U.S. material. It's so we help the U.S. and we help the people down there. So tell me who you are and why you're here. Uh, I'm Steve Marchinsky and I'm here to support President Trump by personally being here. Uh, Trump has our back all the time, so I'm happy to show him, you know, we have his back as well, because this trial is a sham. It's a disgrace. Uh, if anyone should be on trial, it should be the judges and uh, the whole system. And really, I think that's what is taking place. So uh, happy to be here physically to show support. Do you think that there's a way, obviously, Trump is extremely polarizing. Do you think that there's a way for Americans to be maybe a little less polarized? First of all, I don't think he's polarizing. The media said he's polarized. He's not. The media's polarizing. The Democrats are polarizing. The Democrats do the dividing and then say Trump is divisive. The Democrats are destroying our democracy and they say Trump is destroying our democracy. Everything they said about Trump, they've done and, and they're doing. When uh, they sold themselves in 2020 is we need to have the adults back. So look what the adults have created. Almost World War III, what they accused Trump of, uh, you know, potentially causing. Um, so yeah, Trump's a good guy. Trump donated his entire presidential salary to charity. You would think that's worth a mention. So he's done great. He saved New York. He did so much for New York. And then these left-wing New York crooks are spitting this crap at him. Where are you from originally? New York. New York. Me too. Born in Brooklyn. Me too. All right. And, uh, now live in the in the village. Okay. Right. So thank I, you very much. Thank you. Okay. All right. Hi. So I was loading up some videos, and in front of me is a young dude. He's got like. A really cool like uh, shirt on what does it say it says legend and it's picture of Trump okay he's being in interviewed by France 24 and I can see the woman is just incredulous what he's saying which is you know you know everybody says Trump's gonna start World War three and and what are like what do we have now and she, at one point he just said to her 
Latino star. And she said to him, you're kidding, right? And followed him. It was so incredible that she was actually interesting just talking to him. So anyway, I talked to him. He didn't want to be on camera again. But he said to me, he's like, she just wanted to put me back on the plantation. He's uh, He was Dominican. Anyway, uh, <laughs> the media show is as interesting as anything else.